Hi, my name is Corey Greenfield and I'm an art director of the NIMA program. Today I'm going to show you how to colorize black and white photos using Adobe Photoshop. Let's get started. First thing you're going to do is find a photo that matches the same lighting of the skin tones in your photo. Then you're going to use a lasso tool to select them and move them closer together or how big or large you want them to be. Now we're going to create a color palette for the skin using the eyedropper tool to select different shades in the skin. Make sure you choose the sample sizes 5x5 five five to get the average color of the area. Choose the lightest color of the skin and then a new layer. Use the brush tool to paint a little sample anywhere you like. Then you're going to repeat this choosing midtones and the darkest tones of the skin, putting all the color samples in one layer. Now we're going to create a gradient map. Click on the background layer, then choose gradient map from the adjustment icon. The gradient will be made from the colors in the palette. Click on the gradient and more options will pop up. Make sure the gradient is selected and not the mask or it won't do anything. On the right side is the highlights and the left side is the low lights. Click on the box on the right and then click the color and select the lightest color in your palette. Then click on the box on the left, then color, and then select your darkest palette color. To add boxes, just click below anywhere and one will appear. Then click color and select your midtones. Now you can play around and adjust the sliders until the skin looks good. Feel free to add more colors like a brighter highlight or a darker low light. Now we're going to paint the color on the skin. Select the mask and press Command I. Switch to the brush and make sure it is a soft round brush. Make sure Y is the foreground color. If not, press X and it will switch it for you. Then you can just start painting the color on the face. You don't have to be super clean right now because if you press X and switch the foreground color to black, it acts as an eraser for the color. Change the layer to overlay or color, whichever looks better. I personally like the way overlay looks when colorizing. If we go back to our gradient, we can play around with the colors via hue, saturation, and brightness until we get something that we like. A lot of what we're going to be doing is to make the skin look more realistic. If we go into layer style and blending options, we're going to adjust the sliding bars at the bottom. If you hold Alt while moving one slide, it will make it less harsh. This creates more realistic shadows and highlights. Now we're going to create a hue saturation layer by clicking on the adjustment icon. Choose reds and start adjusting the levels until the skin looks like a realistic red. Then click on the mask and press Command I. Choose your brush, lower your flow or opacity, and start painting in red where the face would naturally have it, like the eyes, cheeks, ears, and around the nose. If you feel like you aren't seeing much of a difference, play around with the flow and opacity. These steps are much more obvious on portraits or up close photos of people. My image is not very focused on their faces, but these steps will help make it look more detailed than just choosing one skin tone and coloring it over their entire face. Now to color everything else, we're going to create another hue saturation layer and choose colorize. Whatever item you choose to color next, adjust the levels to reflect what color you want to use. Then click on the mask and click command I and use the brush to paint. Create a different layer for each thing you're colorizing. Sometimes you can color different items to the same layer if the color is going to be similar enough.
You're going to be making a lot of layers, so naming the layers is going to be extremely helpful during this process. Once you have the basic process down of creating hue saturation layers, everything is pretty much the same, just different colors for different items. After you finish colorizing everything in your photo, you can go back and adjust anything you want, even completely change the color or something just by opening back up the hue saturation and adjusting the sliders of that layer. It is helpful to be cleaner when you're painting in the very beginning than being crazy messy about it. That's why I've gone back and erased some things here and there because after everything's all layered together, you can forget what it should look like. So when you go back, you can hide and unhide layers to see exactly what colors should be where and where they are actually. This helps to fine tune everything later but you can be as messy as you want. It doesn't really matter where the layers are in relation to each other because the colors overlap no matter what.
At the very end, it's a lot of fine tuning and you can do whatever you want to make the photo look as best as it possibly can. I created an exposure layer to help with that process. I noticed there was some damage at the bottom of the photo, so I used a spot healing tool to help clean that up. Here's my original photo, and here is the final product. I hope you enjoyed watching this tutorial on how to colorize black and white photos using Adobe Photoshop. Thanks for watching.